Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems from the sixth edition here that I'm holding. We have already solved all the math problems that appeared in the fifth edition. And you will find a solution to fifth edition from day number one through 80. From day number 1 through 80, the study manual, the 5th edition. Today is our day number 103, and today we'll pick up from the topic of how to convert from fraction to decimal. From fraction to decimal, which appears on day number, which appears on page number 66. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Let's, do, let's turn to page number 66, and let's learn how to convert a given fraction into a decimal. It says convert 0.516. This is part E, 0.516 into a fraction. Now, when they say convert it into fraction, listen very carefully. When you are told to convert a fraction, convert, it should say convert decimal to fraction, not fraction to decimal. It says convert decimal to fraction. It's the other way now. Of course, we have a decimal. We want to convert it to a fraction. We have a decimal and we want it in fraction. So what was I saying? When you're given a decimal and when you are asked to convert that decimal into a fraction, listen very carefully, okay? It is understood that that fraction must be presented in the most reduced form. It is understood that you must reduce it as much as you can, otherwise you have not done your job. For example, here, 0.516, we want to convert it into a fraction. In other words, we have to somehow convert this thing to a whole number. What can we do to this thing to convert it into a whole number? Well, what we have to realize is that, what we have to realize is that if we have 0.516, if you want to convert it into a whole number, we can easily multiply that by 1000. And what, watch what happens when you multiply it by 1000. When you multiply, when you multiply, 0.516 times 1000, well, 1000 has three zeros. 1000 has three zeros. One, two, three. If you were to multiply it by 10, if you were to multiply 0.516 by 10, we would have picked our decimal and moved it to the right one spot. If we were to multiply it by 100, 100 has two zeros. Two zeros. We, we, would, we would have moved it two spots. Well, we are multiplying by 1000. Why are we multiplying by 1000? Because we wanted a whole number. We want to convert this 0.516 into a whole number. So you just multiply it by 1000 and by doing so, we move the decimal all the way to the end. And 0.516, when you multiply it by 1000, it becomes 516. But the point is, we cannot simply multiply a given quantity willy-nilly by anything else that we want because if we were to do that, it, we would have changed this value. We cannot change the value of the quantity that is given to us. It, it should still remain the same. It should still remain the same quantity, same value that is when expressed in fraction. In other words, in other words, if you're going to think of this as a fraction, this is a fraction. Think of this as think of 0.516 as 0.516 over one. If you were to multiply the top of this fraction by 1,000, if you were to multiply the top of that fraction by 1,000, we must do the same to the bottom. And now we have not changed the value because we are doing the same thing top and bottom. For example, for example, if you have a half, well, half is just half. But if I were to, if I were, if we were to take top and multiply it by five, well, it's no longer half. It's now it's five over two. That's no longer half. But if we were to multiply top and bottom by five, well, well, that's a different story. Now we have not changed this value because one times five is five and two times five is 10. And it turns out that 5 over 10 is still half. We have not changed its value. As long as you multiply top and bottom of the given fraction by the same amount, we have not changed its value, which is why, we, which is why it's okay for us when we multiply top and bottom by 1,000. Why? Because 1,000 over 1,000 is 1. 5 over 5 is just 1. 
and multiplying a quantity by 1 does not change its value. It's just that that 1 that we're using here, the 1 in this case 5 over 5, and in this case 1000 over 1000, it is a 1, but it is a, it is a 1 incognito. But it is 1 nonetheless. It's 1 in disguise. Now, in case you want, in the event, just in the event, that you're also interested in improving your vocabulary, I will tell you exactly where we learned about incognito, what day, in our vocabulary series, if I can, I can find it very quickly. And if you're interested in it, you will type in vocabulary words, day, incognito. I'm looking under I, just give me one second. Sometimes it takes longer to do things fast, you understand? But give me a second. Oh, there you go, day number 42 it looks like. Vocab day 42. To search for it, just type in vocabulary words day 42, and you will find. And if it does, if it, if it doesn't appear there, if you cannot find it by putting in vocabulary words day 42, then it's always a good idea to also put in my name. Just type in Kishwani, and then vocabulary words day 42. The video will pop right up. Watch that video where we learned about incognito, which means in disguise. It is a one. A thousand over thousand is a one. It's in disguise, but it is one nonetheless. And when you multiply quantity, a given quantity by one, we have not changed its value. So let's see what we have this now. So 0.516 times 1000, as we, as we found out a little while ago, becomes 516. 516. And in the bottom, we have 1000. Why 516? Because 0.516, one more time, when you multiply it by 1000, 1000 has three zeros, 1000 has three zeros, and therefore we pick our decimal and move it three spots to the right. One, two, three. The decimal ends up here. It becomes 516. Now, the bottom, now the last part, which is the most important part, is that the book leaves the answer, the book leaves the answer as this. In the book, they leave the answer, I believe, let me just very quickly check, I'm, I'm, I'm going by my memory, I'm going to check one more time, yes, they leave it like that, it is wrong, it is wrong, the book is wrong, it must not be left, it must not be left in this form, if it can be reduced, it must be reduced, this, this top and bottom, they have a common factor, and since they have a common factor, they share a common factor, it must be reduced as much as we can. As you can clearly see, 516 is an even number. How do we know it's an even number? Because the last digit is even. 1000 is an even number. What's the definition of an even number? An even number is 1 that is divisible by 2. Well, if they are both, both top and bottom are even, we must divide top and bottom by 2. We must reduce it as much. We, can must, we must reduce the top and bottom as much as we can. And we can, when, we can, when we reach a point where we can reduce no more, that's where the final product lies. That's, that's the part that you want to present to the person because, it is in the, because the fraction must be in its most reduced form. Let's reduce it, shall we? We're going to divide top and bottom by 2. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. Okay, stay with me in the story. It's very important that you stay with me in the story. How many twos does five have? Five has two twos. Two twos are four. Two twos are four. This is how the language goes. Two twos are four. Two twos are four. After we take away four from the five, we have a remainder of one. That one goes and joins the one, becomes eleven. That one is going to one is going to go and join the one, become eleven. And eleven has how many twos? Eleven has five twos. How do we know that? Well, because we know, because we know that, we know that five twos are ten. Five twos are ten. If you have five twos, well, what you will have is ten. Here I have one two. Here's another two. There's two twos. Two twos are four. Here's three twos. Three twos are six. Here's another two. That's now we have four twos. And here's the, what? Well, here, here's the three twos. Three twos are six. Here's the four two. Four twos are eight. Five twos are ten. Five twos are ten. If you have a pair of five twos, that's ten. So one more time. Two five has how many twos? Five has two twos. Two twos are four. After we take away four, two twos are five has two twos. After we take away four from the two, we have a remainder of one. That one goes and joins the other one. This one becomes eleven. Eleven has five twos. Five twos are ten. After we take away ten from the eleven, we will have a remainder of one. 
and that one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16 and 16 has 8 twos. 16 has 8 twos. Now I'm going to show you the same procedure by doing a long division and when we do the long division you will understand the language because this is the language I will use throughout the entire series if you're going to watch these videos you have to understand the language you have to understand the terminology let's do the same exact thing the long division what what happens watch what happens we're going to divide it by two aren't we okay, here we go here's the procedure are you ready five has how many twos five has two twos so we cross out the five and put down the two let's start the process one more time we're going to divide 516 we're going to divide the 516 by twos how many twos does five have five has two twos five has two twos two twos are two twos are four two twos are four after we take away four from the five we have a remainder of one what happens to that one that remainder of one goes and joins this one and becomes eleven that one goes and joins this one and becomes eleven and how many twos does eleven have but you have to keep in mind that you had one left over from here when that one goes and joins this one it does not become two it is not one plus one that one goes and joins this one this this remainder of one goes and joins this one it becomes eleven eleven has five twos eleven has five twos five twos are ten five twos are ten it has, eleven has five twos five twos are ten after we take away ten from the eleven we have a remainder of one one more time after we take away 10 from the 11 we have a remainder of 1 what happens to that one that one goes and joins the 6 becomes 16 that one goes one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16 and 16 of course has 8 twos in other words 516 divided by 2 is 256 8 twos are 16 with no remainder that's where the story ends now let's divide the bottom by 2 shall we how many twos does 1 have how many twos does 1 have 1 has no twos 1 has no twos so what's going to happen to that one? That one goes and joins the 10. That one goes and joins the 0 becomes a 10. 10 has 5 twos. We're done with that part. We are at this 0 now. How many twos does 0 have? 0 doesn't have any twos. 0 is just a big fat 0. 0 has no twos. What about that 0? How many twos does that 0 have? That 0 has no twos either. It's a big fat 0 as well. So it turns out that 1000 divided by 2 is 500, which is not a surprise, obviously, we knew it all along, that when you divide 1000 by 2, we get 500, because 500 times 2 is 1000, but that's the procedure. What we notice, one more time, what we notice, don't get confused, when I cross them out here, that's it, that's crossing it out, I don't want you to get confused here, that's how I write my zeros. Typically, I write my zeros like this, but I'm not going to do it here, because I don't want you to get confused with crossing them out. But you will find sometime later on that sometimes I put a line across in my zero here. What we notice again is that 500 is an even number. 258 is an even number. How do we know that 258 is an even number? Because 8, the last digit is even. Since the last digit is even, 258 is even. 500 is even. Which tells us that we can go one more round dividing top and bottom by 2. Which is exactly what we're going to do now. Okay? Let's divide top and bottom by 2. Huh. Okay, watch here. Again, I'm going to do it one more time. This is, I'm not, we're not going to do it every single time, just the first two times, and then you will understand the language. So now we're going to divide 258. We're going to divide 258 by 2. Watch here. 258 by 2. But we're going to do it like a grown-up person, not like a baby. But I'm going to show you the demonstration here so you understand the language. How many twos does 2 have? 2 has 1 2. 2 has 1 2. How many twos does 2 have? 2 has 1, 2, because we are dividing by 2, remember, 2, two ones are 2, that's it, that's the end of it. Now we move on to 5, how many 2's does 5 have? Oh, 5 has 2 2's, 5 has 2 2's, so we bring this 5 down, and we ask ourselves, how many 2's does 5 have? 5 has 2 2's, 2 2's are 4, 2 2's are 4, after we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1, what happens to that 1? That 1 is going to go and join the 8 and become 18. That one, the remainder of 1, is going to go and join the 8 and become 18. And how many 2's does 18 have? 18 has 9 2's. That's where the story ends. Now let's divide the bottom by 2. How many 2's does 5 have? 5 has 2 2's. 2 2's are 4. The remainder of 1, after we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. That one goes and joins the 0 and becomes, 100, becomes a 10. That one goes and joins the 0 becomes a 10. And 10 has 5 twos. How many twos does 0 have? 0 has no 2, it's just a big fat 0. 
So finally, what we find is that 516 divided by 1000 is actually 129, 129 over 250. Now this fraction that you see cannot be reduced anymore and therefore that's the right answer. 516 over 1000 cannot be left like that. It must be reduced as much as we can. Do you understand? We're not quite done yet. The purpose of these videos actually is to learn the mathematics. The purpose, learn the mathematics that you need to have, and that you need to learn in order to do well on the, not only on the exam, but in order to do well when you get in a nursing school because you're going to come across a lot of mathematics. And if your math skills are very uh, shaky, if they, are, if they are not up to par because you haven't done it for a long time, you need to relearn everything. That's the purpose here. So we're going to do this problem in a lot of details. We're not here just to still solve the problem one after the other. That's not the point. We're going to redo this problem and I'm going to show you now. Instead of, do, instead of having done in two steps, we divide it up and bottom by two. We got 258 and we got 500. And we divide it up and bottom by two again. And we got 129 and 250. Well, if you can divide some number by two and divide the result by two again, well, obviously we can divide, we could have divided it up and bottom by four in one shot. Let's do that, shall we? Let's do that. We're going to divide top and bottom by 4. And watch what happens. What happens? So we have, we have 516 over 1000. 516 by 1000. How do we know? How do we know if a number is divisible by 4? Just give me one second. I'm looking for a new marker because this marker is dying. Well, I'm going to finish the video with this thing. I can't find it. any new one. You just give me one second. How do we know if a number is divisible by 4? Do you know? A number, a number is divisible by 4 if, if, if the last two digits of the number is divisible by 4. That's how we tell. Last two digits. We don't have to worry about the entire number. So if somebody asks us, for example, for example, I'm going to make something up. For example, if somebody asks us, I'm just, I'm just going to make up numbers here. Okay, I'm just going to make up numbers here. There. I don't know what that is. We'll find out in a second. So we have we have one, two, three. We have one, two, three. There we go. Let's put. Do you know how to read this number? Do you know how to read these numbers? Well, we have one, two, three. One, two, three. So we have two million. That's five million. So that's eight hundred eight hundred seventy-five million. How do we read this number? It's three billion, three billion, eight hundred seventy-five million, five hundred forty-three thousand six hundred twelve. So if somebody were to come up to us and ask us, is 3,875,543,612 divisible by 4? Well, all we have to do is look at the last two digits. The last two digits happens to be 12. And this tells us that if a number is divisible by 4, if the last two digits of the number is divisible by 4, since we know that we can divide 12 by 4 evenly, 12 divided by 4 is 3, which means this entire number is divisible by 4. Why is it that we don't have to worry about 6 or 3 or 4? Because that 6 that you see there is in hundreds place. That's in hundreds place. That's, a, that's 600. That 6 is 600, which is probably why it is called 612. Is 100 divisible by 4? Of course 100 is divisible by 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. Or if you like, 25 times 4 is 100. Everybody knows 25 times 4 is 100. If 100 is divisible by 4, then so must be 200 and 300 and 500 and 600 and 700. Any multiple of 100 will also be divisible by 4. Similarly, 1000 is divisible by 4. Since 1000 is divisible by 4, and then it stands to reason that 3000 must be divisible by 4. And so on and so forth. Since 10,000 is divisible by 4, therefore 40,000 must also be divisible by 4. So we don't have to worry about any of the other digits, we just have to worry about the last two digits. The last two digits are the only two digits which play a role in determining whether or not a given number is divisible by 4. If the last two digits are divisible by 4, the number must be divisible by 4. 
here, had, had we realized that, had we realized that here from the very beginning, we would have seen that 516 ends in a 16. And since 16 is divisible by 4, and 1000 ends in two zeros. And 0 is divisible by 4. Did you know that? 0 is evenly divisible by 4. 0 divided by 4 is 0. You see, it goes evenly. Any 0 is divisible by any number. 0 divided by any number is just 0. So since both top and bottom are divisible by 4, we could have divided top and bottom by 4 and we would have been done with it. Let's do this, shall we? Instead of doing it in two steps, we're going to divide top and bottom by 4. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this part. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. Watch what happens. How many 4 does 5 have? How many 4 does 5 have? Well, 5 has 1 4. 5 has 1 4. 1 4, of course, 1 4 1 is a 4. After we take away the 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. That one goes and joins this one and becomes 11. That one goes and joins this one, so it becomes 11. 11 has 2 4s. 2 4s are 8. 2 4 is 8. After we take away 8 from the 11, we have a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 36. And 36 is made up of 9 2s. 36 is made up of 9 4s. Uh, 9 4s are, nine are 36. Now let's divide the bottom by 4, shall we? How many 4 does 1 have? 1 has no 4. So that 1 is going to go and join the 0 and become 10. 10 has 2 4s. 2 4s are 8. After we take away ten, 8 from the 10, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins this 0 and becomes a 20. And how many 4 does 20 have? 20 have 20 has 5 4s. 5 4s are 20. How many 4 does 0 have? 0 has no 4. There we go. We got 129, 129 over 250. Before we, before we end the video, we're going to do this division, long division, so you can understand the language. 516. We were dividing it by 4. Watch what happens. I had to give up my black marker because it's dying. Watch what happens. How? So one more time the language, we're going to follow the language from here. How many 4 does 5 have? 5 has 1 4. 5 has 1 4. How many 4 does 5 have? 5 has 1 4. 4 1s are 4. After we take away, after we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. That one goes and joins this one and becomes 11. That one goes and joins this one and become, becomes 11. How many 4 does 11 have? 11 has 2 4s. 2 4s are 8. 11 has 2 4s. 11 has 2 4s. 2 4s are 8. After we take away 8 from the 11, 8 from the 11, we'll have a remainder of 3. After we take away 8 from the 11, we have a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 6. That 3 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16. That 3 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 6, uh, not 16 rather, 36. And 36 has 9 fours. 9 fours are 36. That's it. Let's do part F so we can close the video. This video has become very long. Part F is going to be very simple, very quick process, okay? Part F. We can do it right here. F, there is nothing there. You will see why there is nothing in part F. But in part F we are asked to convert 1.0 7 into a fraction. In order, in order for us to convert into fraction, we have to have the whole number on the top. How, how are we going to convert 1.07 into a whole number? Well, it has two digits. So if we want to multiply this quantity by 100, it will become 107. 1, 1.07, 1.07 times 100. Well, how do we do it? If you're going to multiply it by 100, if you're going to multiply it by 100, we're going to pick up our decimal and move it two spots, one and two. It's going to become 107. So let's do that. We're going to multiply it by 100. But we can't just go around multiplying the top quantity by 100. If you're going to multiply the top quantity by 100, we must multiply the bottom quantity by 100. The question is, what's in the bottom? I don't see anything in the bottom, do you? Of course there is something in the bottom. We can introduce ourselves. If there is nothing there, we can introduce ourselves. The bottom, what we have is one. Is one. 1.07 divided by 1 is 1.07. So we introduce 1, so it is easy to see with our eyes that we have this bottom, we have a quantity in the bottom which must also be multiplied by the same quantity that we are multiplying the top by. We have just multiplied the top by 100, we must multiply the bottom by 100 as well. In other words, we are going to multiply our, our given quantity by 100 over 100. 100 over 100 is 1, we have not changed anything, we have not changed its value. We are simply multiplying 1.07 by 1. 
It's just that one is incognito, is in disguise, but it is one. It is one. 100 divided by 100 is one. So what do we end up with? What do we end up with? We end up with 107, 107 over 100, which is okay. Which is okay. We'll leave it like this because it cannot be reduced any further. It cannot be reduced any further. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow we on day number four. Day number four. We'll do the next topic that you see on the same page, day 104. You see the next topic, which is in the next column, where they're asking us to convert fractions into decimals. Convert fractions into decimals. Well, when the time comes, we'll, I'll change it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.